Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Back with Style by Fiona. Yes, she's our fashion expert, style expert, mom, uh, amazing woman, and so much more. Welcome back to the show today. How are you? Well, I'm a little sick today, so I'll probably sound funny, but that's all right. We all have enough right? <laughs> Aww. What's wrong? Just a cold? Yeah, just all clogged up and a little bit of a sore throat, so I might sound a little croaky or or nas- nasally. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I'm just getting over it. So myself, <laughs> as I'm coughing like this, right. but you look beautiful. And <laughs> uh, I know you mentioned today's our last show, so it'd be kind of a good idea to kind of do a whole recap with Style by Fiona. And the lines are open throughout if you want to call, guys, 631-307-4010. That's 307-4010, area code 631. So Fiona. Fiona, uh, style by Fiona.com. Where did you want to start for today? I just wanted to encourage everybody to understand the importance of um, the connection between psychology and the way that we look. Um, that's kind of my niche and how I work with people, uh, women specifically. I sometimes have men, like I've said before, but most of the time I, my clientele is women because I find that um Historically, women have been a lot more marginalized than men, and we have been told that our value is through our looks. And are you pretty enough to get a husband? Are you pretty enough to, uh, or not pretty enough, but sorry, are you pretty enough to get a husband? Are you um, fertile enough to bear children? And like, and that was mm-hmm. historically that was our value, right? Was being able to bear children and continue the male family lines, and women weren't seen with respect. And unfortunately. Um, that still carries on today in a lot of cultures, even in, even in developed countries, mm-hmm. um, our, our value is attributed to how we look. Now I'm not saying that that's not important because I think that there's a lot of to be gained from feeling good about the way you look and feeling good about yourself and the clothes you wear, which is why I do what I do. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> um it's, it's also about learning that we're so much more. Yes, we can do those things if we so desire. If we want to get married and have kids, we can do that. But that does not define who we are as women. And we can use uh, fashion as a way to explore um, who we are, um, explore our emotions, explore our aspirations, our desires. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be through really expensive means either right um you can look really good on on a tight budget when you know all of the things that work for you and i know because i've done it Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's been times in my life where i've had a little bit more money to spend on um on clothing and, and all of those kinds of things. But there's been times in my life where I've been limited to what I could find at thrift stores um, or what friends would give me and those kinds of things too, right? Just through all the ups and downs of, of living. Um, sure. But the key is to know and believe that you're worth it, right? Ultimately, the key is to believe that you as a person are worth spending the time and the effort and you know, even the money to learn what works for you, what doesn't, and how to make the 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 gifts that nature's given you in terms of your physical body the best that that you can, um, and learn how to make yourself look the best that you can and feel the best that you can because it's not only about looks, right? I mean, mm-hmm. the beauty industry tells us that uh, you know you buy the right makeup and wear the right clothes and you're going to feel better now. I'm not knocking that because I, I, I mean, I help people do that, but <laughs> yep. the point is that um, if you haven't dealt with the emotional side of things on the inside, you can look fantastic on the outside and still feel empty on the inside. Um, I know because that's what happened to me when I started pursuing all of this. Um, and so my goal has to become to help women with both of it, to help them with the emotional side of why they don't feel worthy or why they don't feel like they deserve to look good or those kinds of things. I mean, there's all sorts of different branches of why someone doesn't believe they deserve to look beautiful or whatever, or feel beautiful or both. Right. Um, but that was why I, I focused on, on the emotional side too, because most image consultants, I mean, even in our training, we're told 
uh, don't deal with emotions. You're only there to do the outside. But <laughs> when I took the training 12 years ago, but inevitably, as I've discussed with you before, I always found that it's so connected to some experience or some belief that we have about how women are supposed to look or how women are supposed to act or how women are supposed to dress or, or, you know, my grandma told me I don't look it in gold. And so I'm never going to wear it. Even if gold yeah. suits you more than silver or, or whatever the reasons are. Right. Um, so it's just so connected. It's so interconnected, the clothes that we wear and the way that we express ourselves and, and how it um, makes us feel that's just so important yeah. yeah yeah so for anybody who's listening the first time um here's the deal <laughs> yeah I remember this wait hold on go we we're going back to the beginning yeah just color palettes ahead. and charts okay go ahead go ahead oh yeah well, I'm not going to go over all of that today because it's just too time Gosh. consuming uh -huh. okay but but the thing is is the first step that you want to take um, is get yourself a color analysis done, whether you hire me or you hire somebody locally in person, because I do it online worldwide, but mm -hmm. some people prefer in person, and that's fine. So that's the first step is to get yourself a color analysis done. So you know what your color palette is, and you know which colors look what look good on you and which ones don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then the next step is to get yourself a body analysis or I mean, there's different names for them, but it's essentially a body shape where you learn your body shape and you learn what styles of cuts of clothing work for your body. And then after that, you can do uh, a, a personality or a style style personality. So you learn what types of clothes you want to use to express yourself. Um, and, and then you go shopping. <laughs> and then you clean out your wardrobe and I would recommend doing the whole process about every 10 years or so um, because our colors do sometimes change a little bit as we, as we uh, grow older, um, we get, we get gray. And, and if we dye our hair, then you want to make sure that you're dyeing your hair in your right palette, of course, because <laughs> I've had that where I had the wrong kind of blonde and it made me look really bad. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's just like color analysis, body analysis, um, style personalities, and and then just learning how to use clothes to your benefit. Oh, excuse me. I think I might have to sneeze, or maybe go I don't. Ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Take your time. <clears throat> it's gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, look at the sun. Makes you sneeze. They say. <laughs> is that how the trick is? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just say blow my nose and let it sneeze, and then <laughs> then you'll be okay. Right. Uh. Well, I guess I don't have to sneeze now. I'm just be more nasally sounding, but that's okay. Um, happen. don't worry we got you <laughs> so and and yeah learning because i think the last couple of weeks we talked about shopping and wardrobe strategies and stuff mm -hmm. and and so knowing what you need out of your wardrobe so you look at your life i mean i i have a, a weakness for clothes obviously <laughs> but sometimes i end up buying more fancy things than i need <laughs> mm -hmm. and i don't always have a place to wear them so I, I, I don't know. I make, uh, <laughs> I buy tickets to shows and things so that I can have a place to wear my fancy clothes. Aww. And I'm like, oh, I'm not sure that's the most frugal way to do life, but, but sometimes it. when you have the money, you might as well. Right. Yeah. But, um, it, it doesn't have to be about being really, um, wearing all the labels or wearing really expensive things because you can find stuff that looks, that looks good on you anywhere at the shops where you're like Burberry or Chanel where you're paying 500 to a thousand or more mm -hmm. for one article of clothing mm -hmm. or you can find those same brands sometimes even at the thrift stores depending on if you're willing to wait and look yeah. and so that's why um and it doesn't even have to be high-end brands I mean most of my clothes are what we talked about last week or the week before um what I would call a high-end mass market um, but I get them on discount <laughs> most of yeah. the time. And, but because I know what works for me, I can go to a store and I can just scan all of the, um, the items that are there. And the first thing you're looking for is color, because if the fit is good, but the color sucks, then it's not going to work for you anyway. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I say color analysis is the first and most important step in terms of 
it just narrows out so much of what's available and you can save so much time and so much money on on mistakes purchases and so yeah and then I guess the second phase or the well it's not even a second phase but doing alongside all of the external things is evaluating or not evaluating that's not the word uh, investigating your your internal thought processes and beliefs about fashion about yourself and how all of those things work together um because I think that that's an often overlooked point in um in image consulting is because I, I've had it happen where I I showed somebody how to look really amazing but they couldn't bridge the gap of that I deserve to look that nice and so that was one of my early clients early on um, where I started becoming aware of all of the emotional connections, right? Because um, <clears throat> she, um, she's very beautiful, but she was just dressing so dowdy. And, and I was just like, but, and she hired me to help her look better. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> she couldn't bridge that gap in her mind that that's not me. I'm just plain Jane. I mean, I'm using, I'm making up names here, right? For, but that was her idea of herself her thoughts processes of herself was I'm just plain Jane and I don't, I can't look like that because that's not who I am. Wow. And, and so um, changing the way you, you dress can is probably best for most people done over a period of time, like a process, right? Because we can't usually change our minds that quickly. Some people can um, like, if you see those makeover shows, like what not to wear and stuff, um, but the part that I always felt was missing was like, okay, so you look so great in this makeover, but what happened six yeah. months down the road? Do you still believe that you deserve to look that good when you don't have the stylus on, 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 on uh, speed dial or whatever? I don't know how that works, but yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's about changing the way we think about ourselves, the way we feel about ourselves, as well as changing the clothes that we wear. Um, and it's like a chicken or egg thing, I guess. I don't know which one helps first, but I find that if you can do both of those things together, um, then your style will be more maintain maintainable. maintainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. I got clogged there when I was trying to say that. Oh, no, to mend. Okay. Yeah. Very true. Yep. Maintainable. We got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and as I've grown as a person in, 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 and a professional in, in the field of image consulting and counseling and all that, um, I have learned a little things to ask people about um, how to help them analyze what's going on inside, right? Because um, sometimes I'll have people sitting in my office or over Zoom or whatever, and, and they'll just be like, I just can't wear that color. And, and so you have to do a little deep diving, a little investigating. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, what does that color mean to you? What emotions do you have attached to that color? Or or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a color. It could be a certain style of dressing or, um, you know, whatever the issue is. But so those are just questions that when you're at the store and you see something that you love, but you say, oh, I can't wear that. Ask yourself why. What is it about that item or what is the belief or the feelings that you have attached to the way that item looks that um, that make you think that you can't wear it? And okay. I mean, it can be all sorts of belief systems. Like, I mean, a, a major one that I run into a lot is people who, uh, people seem to think that people who are stylish are snobs. Um, <laughs> I could, uh, all right. I could see where that can come from. I guess it's just the fear of the unknown. We're judging. That's horrible because they look really good. We're intimidated, I think, by that for someone to yes. say that. Yes. Well, exactly. And and that's that's what it comes down to is we feel it like we feel, either feel intimidated or we feel that we don't we can't be that yeah. way. Mm -hmm. Right. So a little bit of both. And and so um, when you look at a, some item of clothing at the shop that you just a door and you know it's the right color and it's the right fit but you put it on you're like oh I don't deserve to look this good mm -hmm. or oh I, I don't want to be perceived as as snobbish or or whatever um and eventually as long as you keep doing the process and, and working through all of those things uh, and it takes time right like this isn't a uh a makeover show <laughs> 
and we have to become our own personal stylist in a certain way. Like, I, I mean, I have a stylist myself who helps me out with some of my own things. Um, but oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> you have your own stylist. Yeah, but um, I was going somewhere before that. What were we saying before that? But I'm actually surprised you do. That shocked me because you are so <laughs> stylish. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was my teacher as well, right? So um, I get feedback from her. I mean, she's a wonderful lady and um, she's she studied under the person originally. So she's in her 80s now and she studied under the, the woman who started the whole mm -hmm. um, field of image consulting as we know it in the West anyway. I'm not sure about Eastern countries, but as we know it in the West, she was the one who started the whole field back in the 40s. But um, anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just so clogged up right now. <laughs> But the point, <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is just examine your thoughts and examine your, your feelings and, and, and be kind about it because it's so easy for us to be like, we have a thought and then we get mad at ourselves for having a thought. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it's just like, okay, if, if that's, oh, oh no, I remember we were talking about being okay, looking good. Right. Because. Yeah. Um, if we if we get stuck in the beliefs that that uh, stylish people are snobs or I don't know that one's like there's other nuances of that that I see but that one's one of the most common ones is people are like well people are gonna just think I'm 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 this snobbish person who's not not down to earth and exactly <laughs> but you're not no and I'm like so I have to wear like a paper bag in order to be down to earth you know I don't know if you guys are familiar with Robert Munch and the paper bag princess but. <laughs> <laughs> it's a children's story that he's a Canadian yeah. author. Anyway, um, it just was so funny because I'm like, we don't have to be the paper bag princess, <laughs> you know, like you can be humble and stylish. Those two can go together. <laughs> and um, so it's just, and I, mean, and I mean, every person has their own uh, collection, I guess, for lack of a better word, of, of beliefs that they've picked up from the media, from family, from uh, whatever the sources are that we carry around with us. And until we start to become aware of what we're thinking and yeah. become aware of how we're feeling about what we're thinking mm -hmm. um, about ourselves and about fashion, uh, we're going to be stuck in whatever way we were looking before. Um and because we we just have these ideas about who we are. But the beautiful thing about that is that the ideas can be changed. We can change the way we think about ourselves. We can change the way we dress. And um, so we're, we're not set in stone. We're not set in stone by what's happened to us as a kid. We're not set in stone by our parents' opinions about fashion or our, our culture's mm -hmm. opinions about fashion or our culture's opinions about the way people are supposed to look or women's value. All of those things we can change for our, ourselves and we can choose what we want to believe. Um, but until we're aware of that, until we're aware that we can make that choice, we, we just get stuck in whatever we've been handed down by TV or, or magazines or, or, you know, family belief systems that have been carried down for generations even sometimes. And so this is, my whole mission, I guess you could say, is to help women use fashion as a vehicle to change their life for better. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, clearly you're passionate about what you do. If you are just tuning in, don't forget the lines are open. If you have any questions, 631-307-4010. If you do have any questions for our style expert here, Fiona McAllister just wants everyone to look, feel their best, and clearly looking good, feeling good, makes you feel good. And I think it gave us all a boost with all this anxiety and extra stress and extra pandemic stuff that we still have going on. Yeah. It does that a lot. You know, I understand a lot of, even a lot of people started working from home. They were sitting home in their pajamas, not getting dressed up. But I think that it also affected a lot of people because of them, they're not used to getting dressed and nice stuff. So now they're going out the way they are working from home. And it's like, what happened? <laughs> it's like I forgot how to look nice, right? <laughs> yes, uh -huh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, <laughs> for people who aren't interested yet in doing a um, any services, I actually have a mini course on my website 
called Vanquishing the COVID Style Slump. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. That it's true. Is, yeah, I think, I don't remember what, I think the price is like 50 bucks or something. It's pretty affordable. Um, but it's just helping you understand the connection, everything that we've talked about over the last few months. Um, and And helping you to realize that you have the power to change the way you think and the way you feel. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes you might need to get a little medical help. Like, you know, I had to get on antidepressants a couple of times in my life and and there's no shame in that either. And I think that there's a lot of still misinformation that it's like a character flaw if your brain doesn't produce the right chemistry, but nobody says that to diabetics, right? Oh, you're a character because your pancreas doesn't work. Like nobody says that to diabetics, right? But we all think it well, not all of us, but a lot of people still think that way about mental health concerns. And we're like, so, you know, if if we need medication to help us, if as long as it's only physical, but not mental, then somehow that's different, but it shouldn't be. <laughs> I agree. I 110% agree. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's just my whole mission, I guess, is is making fashion accessible to, to everyone, every woman or, or man or whatever you identify as who wants to um, who wants to use fashion as a as a way to feel good about themselves and not just be wearing clothes because you can't be naked. <laughs> love it, love it. Yeah, I know. Some people yeah, can, yeah. Yeah, we just... Um, I, I just I think it's sad when sometimes people say, well, I don't I don't care about fashion. I, I just wear whatever I wear. And I'm like, OK, but you're still wearing fashion. Mm-hmm. If you're not walking around naked, fashion is a part of your life. Definitely <laughs> is. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless of what kind of fashion you choose to wear. And so by becoming more aware of who you are and how you want to express yourself to the world, it helps you to have a more healthy relationship, both with yourself and and the connection with the clothes that you wear so that it's not just the age-old problem of a closet full of clothes and nothing to wear because you just don't know how to put things together or you you don't know how to use fashion as um a, a source of expression and, and comfort even right like yeah. so physical and psychological comfort I mean we've talked about that briefly as well so I'm kind of sad that this is the last show. I, but... I was just gonna say, are we sure it is? Yeah, we still got a few. I, I'm left. pretty sure it is. I can I, I can check, but I'm pretty sure this is the the last one for my series. But I just want to thank you so much. It's been wonderful getting to know you thank and you. thank thank you thank me. Please no, thank you. You're amazing. <laughs> You're just a beautiful soul inside and outside. And uh, I have one question for you. For someone like you who has awesome hair and you experiment with colors, how do you, okay, how does it work if someone's trying to, do you make your hair match your clothes? Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Did today, see? Yeah, today I noticed. I was like, like the purple. blue and purple and blue and purple. <laughs> did you, did you just do that? Because like, cause last week, what color was it? It was the same color last it week. Was, but I, I didn't see them. the blue on this. I guess the shirt is bringing it out. Yeah. Blue. yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah, yeah. So that's another way that you can have fun with is um, if you decide if you like dyeing your hair is you can you can match your hair to your clothes. I forgot what I wore last week. But anyway, (laughs) I know, right? Who knows what we did yesterday? I get it. Well, thank you so much for being here. If we want to reach out to you, would you mind sharing how we do so? Absolutely. So anybody who's listening, or if you listen to the replays, please feel free to contact me at Fiona at stylebyfiona.com is my email. And my phone number is 403-966-5896. And I also have an email list if you want to get on that. And I'll share things with people about once a month in a kind of a newsletter thing. And um, I will be uh, building more online courses over the next couple of years that teaching women all about the emotional side of and how to navigate all of that so that when you do go see a stylist that those changes will stick for you Got so. it. all right well thank you so much miss fiona have a great day and i'm sure we'll reconnect one of these days uh i won't say goodbye i'll say till next time okay okay right that's what we should do i think Till next right. time thank you so much have a fantastic day sweetheart 
Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.